All right, welcome back to Black Bulb Podcast. Today we have the lovely Anna Duval with us. I said that right, right? Yeah, you said it. Okay, great. Perfect. We yeah. nailed it. And, and uh, or Anna D's nuts on Instagram, um, whichever you prefer. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you what do you prefer to go by artist wise? Like, how do you prefer people to refer to you? Um, I've gone by Anna D. Anna D's nuts got started because I worked in a. Uh, so many kitchens <laughs> uh was at patty's one night and uh said i'm on a d and there's usually an on an anna and annie like oh, all yeah. the variety of on a name so right. i had to go by my last initial and yeah in the kitchen they were like on a d's nuts and it just took off so sounds yeah. like a sounds like a kitchen style that's joke. a very kitchen thing to happen yeah, yeah. absolutely so yeah i mean on a d on a duval but uh i think most people know me uh, as on a d's nuts so People just see me on the street. They're all D's nuts. Like, I'll answer to that. <laughs> That's good. I like uh, you. I mean, you got to roll with your persona, right? Yeah, it was kind of accidental, but I'm going to, like you said, roll with it. Hell yeah. And our podcast today with Anna is brought to you guys by South Sister Gin from Cascade Street Distillery. Nostrovia. Cheers to that. <laughs> Prost. Oh, Cheers. I got to join. I don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad luck to cheers slacking. with an empty drink. Yeah, no. Yeah, he'll die. <laughs> Don't We've die. seen it happen. Don't, don't die, Ben. <laughs> Cheers, Ben. You guys are so sweet waiting for me in this bullshit. There you go. <laughs> my night off. I got all Thank the time. Oh, yeah. Hell Cheers. yeah. Cheers. Mm. Oh, and that's God. smooth. Yeah, we are. So yeah. I feel like it's a floral gin, not it's like a, a not like a pine needle gin, which is We were actually talking about that because oh. some are like juniper very juniper berry. Yeah. And this one isn't. It's, it's, well, this says it's, this says it says made with corn. This says it has jun- juniper right there, actually. Yeah, I think they all kind of do, but like this one's not as strong. So, of it. if you like pine needle-y kind of gin, don't drink this. But if you like the floral gin, this is this yeah, it's is, got sage this in is it. This is the jazz. Yeah, Yummy. I like the sweeter gin, like this. I like this too. It's good. It's like, a, like a, it's like a winter gin. Thank you very much, Cascade like. Street, Cascade Street Distillery. So it's a nice label too. It is pretty. Yeah. Anyways, so an- Miss Duval. <laughs> She's a painter. <laughs> yeah. A really freaking good painter. This is one of her paintings. She brought it in. If you guys can see it, I don't know if you can. The, the Actually, web- that's a drawing, but drawing, I, I paint and draw. Illustrator, what would you call yourself? Um, Kind of a jack of, a Jill of all trades. A Jill of all yeah. trades. I like how you put that twist uh, on there. <laughs> yeah. That's a drawing um, that I put under my uh, Ultra Glow, which is a a high gloss resin I put on everything. It's like candy oh, paint. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's um, right. You were telling me how you're getting addicted to resin. Yeah, yeah. I've been addicted for a long time, but um, yeah, I, I draw and paint. Mo- I draw more than I paint just cause painting is so time consuming and I work full time at a restaurant. So after I get off, I'm always like doing a little, this is actually done on the back of a Patty's menu. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. I'm, I, I, idle hands are, are the devil's playground. I hate like being at a bar there's only so much Instagram I can look at. So totally. after that, I, I like to do something with my hands. So I'm always drawing and I love to draw my friends and, uh, or anyone that I see is interesting on Instagram. So sorry about your luck. If you get drawn, <laughs> <laughs> when you do paint, you say it takes a long time. Were you doing like oil painting or what um, was it's it? actually acrylic on, yeah. on found wood with uh, orange, bright orange spray paint in the background, which I learned in high school from my amazing art teacher, John Sato, who, okay. uh, she didn't draw or paint herself, but she looked into all these different methods of painting. And uh, she said, if you put orange on the background, bright orange, it'll make your paintings glow. And uh, I've used that ever since, ever since high school. And so you always pick a bright background, just mm-hmm. kind of go from there. That's cool. Yeah. What is your background? When did you start painting? Like, how, how did this all come to be? Oh, man. You, you definitely uh, come a long way. This is like, this is skill. This is talent. <laughs> you don't just wake up with that. <laughs> I can never remember a time when I wasn't drawing. I grew up in a really rural areas in the big island of Hawaii. When uh, My family moved there when I was two. And I literally started drawing because I had nothing else to do. We didn't have a TV till I was 11. Like, my parents were kind of hippie-esque, I guess. So I was, I just drew out of necessity. I was bored. And, uh, yeah. then moving to Maui, I was the Hobbly girl in Hawaii. Like of you didn't fit in, you didn't have friends if you're not local looking. So art was like my magic trick. <laughs> so I started drawing like Kealani loves David or whatever in graffiti letters and people would pay me 50 cents. And I always had to have to cut up the bottom name because they'd break up with them so quickly. And, uh, so I started <laughs> making like small amounts of money drawing like graffiti letters in elementary school. So, Whoa. and in intermediate school. So badass. In Hawaii. But yeah, <laughs> Oops. Oh, <no. laughs> man down. 
Wow, that's a crazy story. That's like such a cool entrepreneurial story. But yeah, and you know? I, it was like my way to kind of try to fit in in Hawaii yeah. where I totally didn't fit in and was always kind of ostracized for being a holly girl, for being a, you know, a white yeah, kid. Yeah, it's got to be rough with the blonde hair. Yeah, so it was my, it, yeah, I always thought it was my, my magic trick, something I could do to like impress people and, and find friends and then... Yeah, moved to Eugene, Oregon eventually, and okay. I didn't have to impress anyone anymore, and I could draw what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody so, yeah. cares there. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And then when did you make it to Portland? Oh, uh, man, I went to, God, I, Miss Sato got me into all kinds of art contests, and one was Sterling Scholarship, which was uh, every um, category, like there was someone who went for math, there was someone who went for science, and I was the one who went for art, so I won money to go to... <laughs> California College of Arts and Crafts. Oh, and cool. <laughs> I went there and I really, I shouldn't say this. I didn't like it. I didn't learn anything. I felt like I you learned more in high school. say whatever the hell you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I was living in San Francisco in the year 2000 where like I ran out of money in 2.5 seconds flat, right? you know, and I'd have to work like <laughs> seven jobs just to go to school. Damn. And I decided, well, shit, I'm, I got to move back home to Hawaii. I'm out of money. I have my tail so- between my legs. I, I, even if I went to art school here, I'm going to be dead broke living in an alley. You Did know, you like really I think you had to, like, was, had arts, to what? was art school something like you felt mm. that you needed to do. I felt like college was something in my day and age that like everyone did that after high school. Like I wish that some guidance counselor or some parent or some friend had said, Hey, you don't need to go to college. Like for, I art. Just, for art, especially for art. Um, I'll go yeah. into that later. One of my biggest regrets is going to, <laughs> is going to college. Uh, hey, me too. Especially for art. Just do art. You know, yeah. you don't just start doing art. Like you don't need a formal education. I mean, if you're learning a specific trade, do that. But I'm a, I feel like I'm a big advocate for like, Hey, don't go. To I'll see. Yeah. Just start <laughs> you know? doing whatever it is you want to do. You don't ask need me school. About, later, ask me about yeah. my art institute story, <laughs> which where I didn't attend. I went to art institute. You did? Yeah. It was oh like, Oh my God. Do I have the story for you? <laughs> oh, I got stories too. It's closed down now. Can you believe that? It's, it's done. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I went to, I, I went on scholarship to California college of arts and crafts, which they decided sounded too hippie and now it's just called California <laughs> college of arts. Apparently crafts. Is so too I, much. I was ready to go back to Hawaii cause I'd run out of money, go to university of uh, Hawaii. Why would you go back to Hawaii? Cause that's where I was from. Cause like, was it like still home. in state tuition technically? Yeah. There? Like move home. Like I, I, and I, and I did at that time I was like, everyone has to go to college after high school. Like there's no other, there's no other choice. Like that's what everybody does, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was working at a coffee shop in San Francisco with this girl and she's like, move to Eugene. It's a cheaper version of California. It's really fun. It's a cheaper version of California. Yeah. <laughs> just, what part of California is she referring to? Like we were in San Francisco. So like it was like a thousand dollars to live in a closet at the time. Right, Literally. Yeah. Like I knew a girl who lived with seven people in a one bedroom and they'd rotate someone sleeping on the floor, someone sleeping on a bed, someone sleeping on a couch. They'd rotate every night. So someone had slept on a bed every six days. Wow. And that was San Francisco. That was the dot-com boom, I think, or whatever. Right. Anyway, so I applied to University of Oregon and Eugene because it was the same application as University of Hawaii. And I got in, I called my dad, I said, I'm moving to Oregon. And he was Wait. like, where the hell is that? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> when when yeah. was this? Uh, 2001. Uh, okay. September 2001. And yeah. uh, I didn't even know it rained in Oregon. I oh hadn't God. really heard of it. Oh I, my gosh, <laughs> you poor soul. I literally, <laughs> I moved there sight unseen. Like, I just... And immediately people accepted me. They're like, hey, you want to come to a party? And I'd look behind me like, who are they talking to? They're like, no, you, you seem cool. And uh, yeah, I just, in a way that I never felt in Hawaii, I felt immediately accepted. And I worked at Dairy Queen, all of a sudden had a great group of friends and started drawing, made friends with a group of skateboarders across the street and got some art into a Thrasher envelope of the month. And that nice. was really got me like, oh, like people like my art. And I got all these random letters from prisoners and which I still what? have. <laughs> you got letters from, what were these well, letters like? Uh, well, it was like, so envelope of the month is like you send a drawing into Thrasher skateboard magazine and they print the drawing with your address on the envelope. So all of a sudden I was getting jail mail, which I, oh my God, guys send me their pictures. Like I, I mean, only in for a misdemeanor or like I've, you oh, know, like geez. I like your art. Like, can you, can we be pen pals? Damn. Which I'd never. And I, yeah. <laughs> Thrash is cool though. I mean, yeah. I've always been a fan. I had no, I I just never subscribed to it. So I guess I didn't have the 
the male. I was, thing. you know, hanging out with skateboarders, and so I, I was trying to like impress a boy, basically, and and it worked. It well, impressed not a lot really. Of, you impressed a lot no, of boys. I, <laughs> Impress a, a lot of, of, <laughs> a lot of other people. Impress a lot of incarcerated <laughs> boys, but I didn't impress the boy that I wanted to impress. Either way, <laughs> so how would you how would you describe like the development of your style right now? Because I, I, this is a drawing, but you do yeah. paintings, and it's mostly people. You do portrait style. Yeah, I so I'd been working at Dairy Queen by that time. Graduated from U of O. Uh, the more I worked, I worked at a, El, a like El Salvadorian restaurant on the side. The more that I worked, the less I got interested in school. In fact, at the end of uh, U of O, I was paying someone to do my projects for me because I was working so much, uh, making tips, like working at Dairy Queen, making cakes. And so at, on my graduation, like they actually called my name three times. I was like summa cum laude or whatever. And I wasn't, I was working at Dairy Queen and the other guy was prancing across the stage and my friend Anna in the crowd was like, she's working at Dairy Queen. She's not even here. Oh, and, uh, damn. Yeah. So the more I worked, the less I got interested in school and realized I probably didn't even have to, you know, do that, go to arts or I went to school for multimedia design, which was something I thought I could make money doing. And, uh, all, at that time I'd been working at Dairy Queen for five years and I was like, what am I doing? So I said, I'm going to move to Portland, Oregon on August 5th, 2005. I just set a date and I said, I'm going to paint beautiful women when I move there. And, uh, Wow. Yeah. I'm, I feel like I sort of accomplished that goal. And, uh, you definitely do. Definitely have. Yeah, it's been a long I time. Don't, to be honest, I don't do art full time. I'm a full time cocktail waitress at a restaurant bar downtown. I want, I love that they've employed me and put up with me for 13 years, but <laughs> I don't want to name names in case I say something. Right. <laughs> no anti, worries. Yeah. Anti corporate America in this, <laughs> in this podcast, <laughs> you know? Dude, I was just saying on the last one we had that Alex hates corporations so mm. much. He's always, anytime someone brings up something corporate, <laughs> yeah. he was complaining. He was like, what did you say? You said you went to a, uh, oh, a street art themed. Yeah. It was, something. A, street, it was a big like street art, um, I'm going to call it a gallery, or something. but they were oh. hanging up every street artist work. They had like a dance battle in there and it was really cool. And I'm like, wow, this is exactly how it should be, you know, for street art. Yeah. And I don't think street artists would like being in like the Pearl district and some like swanky little modern gallery. I don't think they'd like that because, uh anti-corporate bullshit yeah yeah, yeah. anyway I've, i like i love <laughs> i mean i love to do art but i love a lot of the other things I, I like to do as well like i like to go running i'm i really like being a cocktail waitress i love the interesting people you meet I, you've meet you meet everyone from you know the poorest person to like an actor to an, a lawyer to you know my, the the reason i have my dentist is because of Jay, or because of where I work. I'm going to say where I work. <laughs> yeah. You're but, definitely um, like extremely extroverted. She came in here um, loud in a good way. You know what I mean? You brought like pizza sure. and beer and it was kind of funny. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, so, so much positive energy. Like yeah. A shit ton for sure. I was stoked to have you on for that. And plus, I mean, any, <laughs> for as much as we plug Ace Troy, anytime Ace Troy <laughs> gives a thumbs up, <laughs> we're stoked to have them per that person on. Sweet, so yeah. he, he was adamant about us getting you on no way adamant yes well thank you ace troy yeah yeah he's amazing i met him because of my favorite saying whatever forever and my friend danny her best friend bought me a piece of his that said whatever whatever forever and his instagram handle was on the back so i feel like i i dm'd him or something and he was cool (laughs) honest friend honest friend jana came with her today to support her yeah because i'm shy and i'm like scared of podcasts you're shy you're shy (laughs) you're not shy you're not coming off as shy (laughs) Yeah, okay, no, 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 I'm doing okay. Yeah, I'm you're doing, doing fine. Okay. Totally. <laughs> so where do you seek inspiration other than just looking at people in bars? Um, yeah, I, so recently in my life, I've had a lot of death and suicide. Uh, make a long story short, my mom committed suicide in 2013 and my brother passed away randomly of a totally random heart attack. He was totally healthy in 2016. And so I feel like I, I in a way, I want to immortalize everyone. Like I want to, like if I draw Jenna, she'll be, yeah, I've, I've drawn all my, I try, I'm trying to draw all my friends. I want to basically That's make awesome. them immortal. You know, like I won't die if I have this thing that I leave behind and they won't die either. They'll live forever. Like I put this lacquer on the, on these paintings and like Jana will be here in 300 years. I know Jana's going to die. And I'm, I feel like I'm especially weird about mortality now just because I feel like everyone that was close to me kind of has passed really recently. So mm-hmm. yeah, I kind of want to, I think I'm, I was always wanting to draw my friends cause I think they're beautiful, but now I'm especially like, 
have this weird idea of like wanting to preserve something, you know, like wanting something to last forever. Wow. Uh, just so like, like people ask me about my tattoos and I say, it's the only thing I love that'll never leave me. And I feel like everything else in my life has kind of left me in, in not to be too morbid, but you know what I mean? Like, so tattoos and art like this, this painting, it's probably going to, or this print even is going to last possibly 200 to 300 years because of the resin on it. And I'm, I've been especially like, I don't know, fascinated by something like that. My, I had an ex whose father passed away battling drugs and liver failure. And he was depressed that his father died, of course. But the thing that depressed him most was that he left him nothing. There was not a ring. There was not a flannel t-shirt. So I'm like, dude, when I die, I want to have left something behind and I want to have left something for all my friends, you know? And that's, I think that's really meaningful in today's age where things last for two seconds, you know, mm-hmm. we forget about everything. Everything's immediately. fleeting, right? Super fleeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it just becomes more and more like that every day, especially you know? as everything becomes more digital. It's easy for it just to get lost. In yeah. A hard like they say, somewhere. if an ad doesn't catch your attention within the first one second, it's like not even a good, you know, it's true. Yep. I mean, yeah. I mean, just, just test yourself when you're scrolling through Facebook or you know? try to watch a movie. I mean, I, yeah, I, I talk follow- about, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> I, I used to, movies used to fascinate me. Now I'm like, this was a great nap, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I, don't too know. Real, I value naps a yeah. lot. I, mean, now. I, I, don't know I why. definitely prior, prioritize sleep. So, so I, I just feel bad because I feel like movies used to be, and now they don't hold your attention anymore because we're so used to just everything. You want to know what's funny is that, uh, I've been on a, on another podcast to do, we're reviewing, uh, old nineties movies that are silly, mm-hmm. but these silly movies have really convoluted not not convoluted but complex and intricate plots you never see that today ever because no movies. one would follow them yeah it's so correct. simple right <laughs> exactly. now it's like you see an a plot and a b plot at most it's like superhero yeah. movies and shit yeah. i hate superhero well, movies well superhero movies are some of the most complex movies that come out oh, today i feel I like know. right there's too much uh, there's there the, are there there is an excessive amount I, so i'm not familiar with people i mean they have a cult following or like even comics, people think I'm really into comics because of my art. Because of the way you draw. I mean, look, I mean, I, you, you see that and it does, it kind of reminds you of certain uh, graphic ask me artists about like that. comics and I like, actually, for sure. I learned to draw my dad because I was bored for one. My dad used to sketch and he's actually really good, but he got more into biology. He's a bird nerd and uh, <laughs> he's a really good artist too, but he just didn't pursue that. Um, but I, Disney movies, I drew Ariel and Princess Jasmine and Belle in that yellow dress I have a sketchbooks where it was kind of like psychotic. Like I drew them over and over and over. And it, I guess made me have this really unrealistic ideal of female beauty that maybe I still look for today. But yeah, I, I feel like I learned to draw the female form from Disney movies, which was not an accurate representation of totally a normal not, female. Right. It's oh, no, fun, not at all. You know? And so it, for, for you as someone who grew up and got influenced by that, and now you draw beautiful women, do you think that that, influence on you is negative at all that like unrealistic expectation or do you think that you i mean because because you you draw such amazing shit right now and i feel like that's a that's an interesting interesting question i feel like uh, it's going back to the art institute thing so uh i feel like i draw women that look uh, provocative looking women but I feel like they're in control. I hope that like in the it's images a, that I show I that they aren't victims, that they aren't like, oh, that are like, look at me, eat it and like it. You know, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a self-made woman. Like I'm sexy and I'm using that to my advantage or whatever. I hope that's what comes across. Um, to me, it does for sure. Yeah. That's and I've totally heard, the vibe I get. I've, I've heard that sentiment from, from women who looked at my art and uh, my art's up at Momo's. Uh, and a lot of people or bartenders that work there are like a lot of times they're surprised that a woman has made this art and that's kind of, uh, that's kind of a compliment to me in a way, you know? So I, I had to really like look a few times at your gallery. I wish we could translate it, it again. <laughs> it's like we had, we had lambskins on this before this and he, he's all analog and you, you it can't, it doesn't translate digitally at all. Like when he, he handed us a couple of uh, pieces he did and I was Meaning, like, I was like, like he does everything digital. No, no everything. He doesn't, he doesn't um, do anything. Like fine digital. It's the fine artist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I don't do anything digital. It's all so by him. Right. Exactly. I don't even have a computer. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> no I really way. Don't. Awesome. Yeah. I don't. Wow. I, it's, I mean, it's so old. It just plays old atmosphere songs it plays old music like good shit. that's good <laughs> shit though no yeah. respect there. yeah <laughs> but at uh at your guys's gallery uh anna did a gallery with ace troy yeah a week ago at or slingshot something. yeah yeah slingshot and uh i like i 
I just didn't understand because it, it Instagram does not do the justice of the detail in yeah. those in those drawings or, or and the size. I feel or like the size, yeah. yeah. Some of them are huge, yeah, and that's why they're so detailed. Like the one I did of Jana is like pre- basically life sized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Primal Screaming with Friends had one that was like the size of like half that backdrop. I mean, it's cool when they do them that big. Yeah, but yeah. you don't see it until you like get a photo of him. Next to, Next to it, it painting, yeah. you're like, for scale. I'm yeah. like, holy shit, like that thing's yeah. huge. Yeah. I was like, so you're, or I was like, so Anna's artwork takes longer than yours, huh? To Ace, <laughs> <laughs> way longer. <laughs> Who's doing yeah. stencils and shit, you know? And he's like, uh, yeah. I love, I love the comment someone said about our show. It's like hanging out with like 15 hot girls watching an 80s movie because like the wall faced each other, like his art and my art. So yeah, like, yeah, like, oh, that's, that's so true. That's, that's too a great fun. compliment. That's really cool. Where was the show at? Uh, Slingshot. On Where's Foster. The, oh, yeah, okay, Southeast. Okay. Yeah. It's a cool bar. I haven't been there a bunch. Uh, yeah. I got the, th- the show through Ace, who Ace is like amazing at being, I feel like a lot of artists are super kind of selfish and don't want to spread the aloha, as it were. And Ace is like, oh, he's all about it. I want to hook you up with shows. Like, and that's, yeah. and that's one of the reasons. Yeah. This, has become, oh, this has become like the Ace Troy promo show. I swear <laughs> to God. Like every no, show. And, and he deserves it in that way. <laughs> that was where I met you. Which was which At was the nice. Show, yeah, yeah, because I just I think we and just, I met Ace's dad. <laughs> He was oh, there. Yeah. Wait, what's his dad like? We're just talking about uh, Ace. Like, his dad is <laughs> cool. his really dad cool. is nothing like him at all. <laughs> From the so, painting. Oh, oh, so so Ace Troy's dad saw saw Jana and yeah. okay. but was surprised that she was not a five two Mexican woman because he assumed she was from she's your actually from your six painting. feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> mailman baby. <laughs> just, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Jana. I have a question: Was that's this commissioned? Awesome. Uh, that was for um, yeah, that's a long story. That <laughs> that was for, for Boneyard it. Beer. Um, my friend who I work, Dana, uh, Dana Robles, who I worked at Dairy Queen with, uh, okay. ended up. Long story short, brewing for, I believe, Oakshire and then Nkasi and then Boneyard. And I was working two jobs at the time and she calls me and she's like, uh, I sort of involved you in this bet with my boss. Um, I need a tap handle sticker for a beer oh, with uh, the owner's likeness, the, the brewery owner's likeness on the sticker. And the, the artist did it and it's totally shitty. And she's like, <laughs> can you, Help us out. Home can you, out. uh, can you do a drawing? And if you win this said, you know, if you, if you do a better drawing, you'll, your art will be on a tap handle and you'll get $200 or something. And I was like, I wasn't interested. And I was like, I'm so busy. I was working at Patty's and at, a, at Jake's at the time. And, um, yeah, I was like, I don't have time, but I was like my art on a tap handle, like that piqued my interest. I was mm-hmm. like, totally, cool. yeah. you know, that's great totally. exposure. And I love beer. Yeah, no, that's just a good feeling. So, regardless of the exposure, I feel like I yeah. just looked up uh, pictures, images of the owner of the brewery online, and I did that. And I was like, I don't know if it looks like him because I don't know him. And I sent it in. I actually had um, RX Skulls do the do the vector art oh, for this because I don't have a computer, so yeah, I did the yeah. drawing, but I needed it as a vector image. Yeah, we're actually having him on. In just a month. Be he yeah. did it the same day for a really great price, and he's amazing. Uh, Highly recommend if anyone needs Victor. I don't, he's probably he way seems, too busy now. He seems prolific. Yeah. Too. And I just like DM'd just him. I was like, shit all the time for oh, yeah. cheap or free. Yeah. And he's always in Berlin or, all, you know, he's yeah. all over the place. So, but anyway, he did the vectors for that. And uh, long story short, That's dope. the Boneyard thought that was a better rendition of uh, the owner of the brewery. So uh, good. Yeah. So, and how, then I did that this? one. And then I did another one for them for. The incredible pulp blood orange. Yeah, I see that. Okay, th- so that is another tap handle. Yeah, so they cool. it's like there's a tap handle and they put the sticker on it. I don't it. know if you guys can see that. Yeah. So that's the uh, boneyard one. Mm-hmm. They're both boneyards. Yeah, they're both boneyard. So where uh, where can people see these on on taps? Uh geez, they're kind of all over California and Oregon, I think. Uh, I think I'd, I've seen this one for sure. Yeah. That this, the at, Boneyards is the, see, when I see stuff like this from far away, that's tiny. It's l- harder yeah, to memorize. Yeah, that one was way better. That this one was, was a lot more my like. My second try. <laughs> my okay, first try, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. Clearly, well, that's kind so. of like how the, <laughs> dude, I, see, this is awesome mm-hmm. uh, in that, like, these are the best kind of lessons, I think, as an artist. Yeah. I don't want to like, like. No, because from because, far away. Because look at this. Like, look, look at the difference between these two things. Yep. It's exactly. fucking incredible. One of these says incredible on it, right? Incredible <laughs> it beer. That's I, so I'm a little biased <laughs> with incredible. my word choice right now. That word but, was like the worst 
word because it's so long to put <laughs> oh my gosh yeah was, dude oh, i know yeah. and it's like a bunch of times for the spacing <laughs> and then like oh that again. e's a lot bigger than i thought it was gonna be <laughs> but tell me down. about art institute actually because yes I'm an art let's hear these stories for your, for oh god yeah <laughs> for your well, listening pleasure <laughs> actually this is what i did i i went to um i went to oregon state mm-hmm. for like five years and <laughs> it, within hey, those five years i changed my major a bunch of times didn't really get anywhere that's kind of normal yeah yeah mm-hmm. and uh, you know i was like fine arts then i was photography then i was like business I was just like all over the place because I knew I liked art, but it's, you realize it's, it's, it's really tough. Yeah. Like make us an artist. Is a keeper, I think <laughs> I have to go back, but, but yeah, but I hated the business classes. The business <laughs> school was awful. It was, was like terrible at math. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. That no, wasn't cool at all. So I had a sister who was going to the art institute who did the exact same thing I did. And she was like, yeah, it's chill. And I'm like, all right. And they had just, they had just brought up this like new program called design management, which was like the business side of art. That sounds cool. Yeah, and I was what like, "What year was this?" 2011. Okay, around then, and I was like, "I'll do that." In some classes, I had some instructors that I connected with a lot. Other ones, I didn't. But like the ones that I did, like I still talk to. Mm-hmm. And I think that was more valuable than anything. Granted, very overpriced. Yeah, I'll be in debt. I never for, actually went there. Yeah, I'll be in debt <laughs> for a long time. But I do value the lessons I did learn. Although, you know, I, I, I was eyeing PNCA as well. That was my second option, but it was easier just to do our institute. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like we have a skewed... Uh, I wonder which one's more expensive. Oh, God, I don't know. I don't, I, but then it goes back to the debate of like, if you're good at art, do you need it? Just do art, yeah. yeah. So like I've gotten all of my art shows by just like going around. Literally, this is how I've gotten art shows, all of them. I hang out at bars after work, after my cocktailing shift, and I start drawing at a bar. Like, yeah. Someone comes over my shoulder like, hey, that's pretty good. Do you do paintings? Like, that's how I got the show right. at Momos, which is like my permanent live portfolio of all my art. Uh, he, Thomas, the owner, came over my shoulder 2006 and was like, hey, that's a cool sketch. Do you do any paintings? I said, yeah. He's like, I need something to decorate my walls. Like, can you help me? And uh, he never charges me commission. I sell prints. I have paintings for sale. I put a show up there in 2006 and never took it down, basically. Wow. So, uh, yeah. And uh, it's great to have, I work right next door. So anyone who's like, what's your art like? I can be like, just go to Momo's, you know, check it out. So. Well, you're, you're something that we don't see very often because we bring a lot of artists on and a lot of them are very like, they're reserved. They're not extra. Totally. And yeah. you're the opposite. Really? Yeah, and absolutely. But, and we always like try to preach or not preach, but. That's it, funny. I feel like I'm being nervous on this one. <laughs> No, you came in here with pizza and beer and laughing. And we Literally. Was, yeah. It's my day yeah. off. It's my day off. Yeah. Day. yeah. We took the photos. It was easy as hell. Like you didn't have to give you much direction. At all. I had to hug a plan, yeah, you which were I'm so, not used to. But. You were down for whatever, which, yeah. is, which is exactly what we like. I mean, that's how me and Alex are. That's why we've yeah. done so many wacky projects. I, yeah, you because everyone's like an introvert, you know, that yeah. comes on there. They're used Artists to spending. Are. And, like I said, and so I feel exactly. And so I feel like drawing in bars is perfect for me because I like to be... I like to people. be alone in social places. Like yeah. gotcha. I'm just as much, I'm half introvert, half extrovert. Like I don't want to be at home drawing, but if I'm out in public drawing, it's a, it's a kill two birds with one stone. Cause I meet cool people. I might get a cool, I might get a show connect, you know, like if you're out in public doing what you love to do, someone's going to notice it. And so you put yourself out there. Yeah. And, <sighs> and it's great. And there's only so much Instagram you can look at really until you're well, like, it's funny because like, that's what people did before social media. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're, now, you're putting yourself out on Facebook, but Facebook is just like the bars downtown in a way. You know what I mean? Yep. So like, that's how you make your connections. That's how you keep in contact with yeah. them. And, so many people are like on dating websites and like, oh, haven't yeah, met anyone. Yeah. I'm like, have you actually gone out in public though? Like that's yeah. where you meet people. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Anyway, the art Institute story. Oh yeah. So, yes. So I don't us, even know us. if I'm at Liberty to tell this tale, but it's a really great one. So <laughs> we give you I was waiting tables on the patio at Jake's. And right after my Pablo Pills Boneyard tap handle had come out and my manager at, at my job was nice enough to put the tap handle on with the beer. Be like, our, our employee has made this tap handle. Like we're rep- he was cool. He represented. Yeah. So I'm waiting on this guy and he's really cool. And he's, he becomes my regular and we get to talking about, oh, what do I like to do outside of work? I said, I like to, to do art and look at this. I did this tap handle. He's like, that's really good. You draw all the time. I'm like, yeah. So he starts asking me about if I went to art school and I say all this, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I did. It was my biggest regret. Like I, oh, I'm shit. talking, I'm talking mad shit about art school. And, uh, he's like, you're never going to guess what I do for a living. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, uh, I'm like, are you an art? You don't look like an art student. I'm like, uh, he's like, I am the president of Art Institute of what Portland. Was his name? I, can't, I know exactly. <laughs> his who name it is Greg Crow, and he's amazing. Oh, Greg, I don't so know. Uh, anyway, he was yeah. the former, formerly the president. So he is my regular, and he starts, you know, bec- becoming interested in my art. And he, and I said, are you on Instagram? He's like, God, everyone wants, my 10 year old daughter needs me to be on Instagram. I said, get on Instagram. My art's on there. And he's like, fine. If you, if uh, you and my daughter want me to be on the social media thing, I'll do it. So he starts following my art. A couple months later, he's like, oh, we're doing um, a show at Art Institute for like, we do a faculty, we do um, students and we do uh, community artists. And he's like, I want you to be one of the community artists to do a show. I'm like at Art Institute. I'm like, Oh my God, I would love, you know, are you kidding? Like, this is so amazing. Like I've never gone to school, but this is like really good exposure. So I'm really excited and I work really hard on the show. Uh, three months go by and he, I get a, a Facebook message. He's going to move to Tennessee to work at a different art school, oh, not, sure. not Art Institute. So I was like, okay, well, I was like, uh, is the show still on? And he's like, well, email the new guy and you know, tell him the nature of your work, see if it's still a go. I'm like, I, he's like, I want your show to happen. I email the new guy, do exactly what he says. You know, are you aware the nature of my work? Is this still okay? And he's like, yeah. So I start making massive amounts of work. This is like a huge space that I have to fill. And I feel like this is like, I need to not mess this up. You know, I need to not fuck this up. Like this is a good opportunity. My dad is going to come from Maui. He never comes to anything, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like everything's resting on the show. Two weeks out, I get an email from the new president of the school saying he saw my work and he thought it was too edgy for what they wow. wanted at our, at Art Institute. Oh, and the show's no. canceled. The show's now canceled. Holy shit. I had put in hours. I put in hundreds of dollars. I had, oh, no. Your shit's too edgy? Too for edgy for Art Institute. Yeah. And so I start crying immediately. I don't know what to do. I'm like, my dad is coming. And yeah. he's... Pr- He's on the conservative side. Like this is one thing that's made him proud. Like now I have to tell him my stuff is it's done because of it's too edgy. That's that's so, a, that's so lame because like I knew a lot of instructors who that promoted is who promoted. So edgy. I call Greg Crow crying, uh, and I say, "Hey, I know this is not your basic in Hawaii. They say Kuleana. This is not your responsibility anymore." But my show just got cans um, due mm. to content. Uh, I post everything I paint on Instagram. It's never been taken down. I even put pasties over nipples in the paintings. Like I conscientious of like, like I'm I'm like what is left to the imagination is even more cool to me than what you see to me. You know, like I, I would like to paint full nudes, but I actually like covering some, you know, I like that there's something left to the imagination. So Mm -hmm. for sure. And then you get to use more colors and all that. And if my stuff stuff. is not deleted from Instagram, it's pretty kosher because I know how strict they are, you know, on Instagram. Totally. So yeah, Greg's like, that's bullshit. <laughs> and that he uh, he gets on the horn with the guy who runs all the art institutes. He's like, what? caps to be my drinking buddy. And uh, the show went on, needless to say. I really? stepped on a lot of toes. Uh, but I came in with my art the, the, ni- the night of the, hang- the hanging of the show. And two of the pieces, I wasn't allowed to hang at all. And one of the pieces I could only hang for the duration of the show. And then my show was taken down three days after it was put up, even though it was supposed to be up for a month. (laughs) But at least I got the small victory of the opening. You know, my dad got to see. Yeah. But it shocked me. I'm like, censorship at an art school? Really? Really? Like that's kind of, I mean, that's... And my stuff is not, it's not lewd. It's Mm. not like a girl... Spreading it or anything. No. Yeah. It's, my stuff is not pornographic. It's provocative, yes. It's beautiful women being beautiful. And there's cleavage and there's shiny lips and there's like you know but the, it's not lewd at all yeah and i bet they're afraid really, of parents trying to get their kids somewhere i don't defend that yeah yeah i don't no. defend that at all but i bet you that's what they were thinking so that like, was my that's my art institute story yeah that's, that's always sucks. been a huge sorry, issue yeah, that's yeah. lame yeah yeah you're right it shouldn't be taught to like censor anything i think we were raised like without and uh, do they not have life drawing everything. classes are you kidding like oh and he, yeah. and he said yes he's like but we never post that on our walls <laughs> That's just so fucked because up. Because it's all because of advertising. Like they do those yeah. shows for advertising. Like, yeah, yeah. To get and I heard like in. some kind of a Lutheran organization was running the school at the at the schools, end of the days. Schools, I have no idea. Scam. I'm just t- yeah, yeah. No, schools is scam. Yeah, they got they closed down like ten of them from the 
major investor or no, like the major capital holder or something like that. Yeah. It's like my issue. Anyway, I just was mad because I actually emailed them and asked them, Hey, like, is this still cool? And they're like, yeah. And then two weeks out, they're like, no, it's like, no, that's not professional. Like it's, I it's, preemptively yeah. struck, you know, struck and said, Hey, I'm aware of the nature of my work. I wouldn't hang it at like a Chuck E. Cheese's, you know, like I know. I'm not, it's not provocative. It's, I'm not like turned on by your work. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's fucking beautiful. Yeah, like it's, it's no, fucking it's really awesome. Nice. Like it it's like, be. it's so it's badass. Lewd. It's not, it's lewd. not lewd. Yeah. It was that, it was that one guy's thought. opinion. It was that, that one, one guy, guy, man. Cause the other yeah. guy was totally chill that oh, everyone no, was on board. I feel more uncomfortable from Ace Troy's awesome art than yeah. I do from yours, you know, cause Ace Troy's like fucks with you. This is just badassness, you know? Greg and Greg is amazing. He saved the show single-handedly and good. That's good. Yeah. yeah that's a, I have nothing bad to say about him. The new Whoa, guy. Ugh, yeah. You got these other ones that we want to talk Can about. Can you tell too. us about this? Yeah, that's a, that's my Frida. I uh, did a drawing on the back of a menu. Put of Frida. Of camera again. You love menus. Yeah. I work at restaurant. I've worked at restaurants since I was 14. <laughs> so uh, Frida, I, I like her art, but I'm more obsessed with her story of like how strong she was. She got really uh, fucked up in an accident. She kept painting. Uh, she dated Diego Rivera, who cheated on her the whole time, and she was still a prolific art. You know, I'm more obsessed with like the story of her strength. Her art's for cool, sure. but like, so I became like Frida's my 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 girl. Like, I guess it's politically incorrect to say spirit animal, but she's my spirit animal. And uh, is that wait why? I don't oh, know. Oh wow, I've heard yeah, that you it got was, a tattoo and everything. Is that, yeah, that, that's this your... is the drawing that I did of her, and I wanted to get a tattooed, and I went to uh, Lewis Hess at. Um, Atlas tattoo and I wanted him to take my drawing and put it into his own style because he's amazing and he's like I really like your drawing and he <laughs> did my drawing on me and I got so much positive response from the tattoo I'm like I need to so this is like if my drawing had a brand it would be that that sticker that drawing I sell more prints of that Frida than I do of anything else that's like it's become my like my flagship of my art in a sort of weird way so mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my Frida. So what would you say you do when you get into like um, a creative roadblock? Like, how do you get out of it? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting you say that. Uh, I feel like artists have writer's block just as much as writers do, you know? It's tough to get that pen on the paper. I, there's, I go through weeks of just like drinking too much and not drawing anything and like thinking about, I should, you know, I'm not an artist. I just drink a lot about it. Like... Think, like thinking about drawing, but never yeah. doing it. And then like once I start on a painting, I become obsessed with it. And it's like all I'm doing. You get immersed into it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I've kept a diary since I was 18. And in almost every single entry, I'm say I should be drawing more. <laughs> you know, I have yeah. thought that way my whole, I'm my own biggest critic. I always feel like I'm not doing enough. But then sometimes I hang a show like at Slingshot and I look at, I'm like, I did all this stuff. Like, when did I fucking do? Like, I, I don't, you know, like it's a lot of stuff. Like I'm always yeah. thinking I'm not doing enough. Um, I feel like creative roadblock, the way to get out of it is just to put the first line on the paper, just like a writer would be to put the first word on the, of the story, you know, mm-hmm. just start, just start. Cause sometimes I feel like I'm afraid of doing it cause I don't, cause I don't, wouldn't be able to stop and like have to go to work and stuff. So sometimes it's, it's always me in my own way, you know, like. Yeah. Know. It's, it's tough. Like even I have, I have like a canvas and sitting like this big canvas and I have like a big plan for it. And it's literally been sitting there with my same plan for like almost a year. Yeah. And it, it, it's like driving me crazy. And I know like the first step is to get a piece of paint out and just start going, just start for, going it. Just, for it. Just go for and it. And the thing yeah. with paint is you can always paint over it. Even if you did something and it sucked, just you can, but I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. So, uh, th- that's why even if I'm not painting, at least I'm always, Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mike. At least I'm always drawing. <laughs> well, I think like drawing is, is the first step to, you know, go and put, yeah, I won't do a painting unless I have like a perfect underdrawing, like a perfect drawing on the canvas. Yeah. It's like, why would you build a house on a shitty foundation? I would say like, if the drawing's not perfect, don't start the painting. I think me. what holds me back is if there's no like deeper meaning to the painting. Like mm-hmm. if I just have an idea of something that looks cool, I'll be like, Oh, it looks cool. I should do that. And then I stop. Cause I'm like, why am I doing that? Like, why? The, what's the point? Yeah. If someone asks about it, what are you going to say? Like, Oh, I just thought it looked cool. And that's stupid. That's my, it's my subjective opinion. Yeah. No, that's no, no. Me. 
It's stupid. No, yeah, because then it's just wallpaper. And people, you know, I think people have this weird misperception that like doing a painting is just like orgasmic, like I'm having fun doing. No, it's stressful. It's hard figuring out how to do it, make it look right. Yeah. When I'm done, I feel like it's, I've had an exorcism. Like I've like something came out of me and when I'm happy with it, I'm done. It's a release for but sure. But the process is like, I like to run too. The process is like running. It's a While marathon. you're running, you're like, ah, I hate my life. Yeah. What am I doing? Like, dude, same as painting. When I'm done with the run, hell yeah, I'm the queen of the world. You, you know, when I'm done with the painting, yeah. hell yeah. When I'm doing the painting, I'm like, am I even good at this? What am I doing? I'm going to die. Like, you, you question know? yourself for yeah, sure. Yeah. So dude, it, it's la- fake to think that like, and I feel like a lot of artists say that the whole process is like this mind blowing, like orgasm. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. Not for me anyway. Not for me. Yeah, not for everyone. The mm-hmm. last the last uh, time I drew anything, I think, was a paid project that Alex and I did together. And I've never been that like emotionally freaking out about anything I think I've ever done. Yeah. I was like, exactly what you're saying. Like, I want to die. This is the worst thing I've ever done. I'm a piece of shit. I should just fucking quit. <laughs> like, yep. this, I am such a piece of garbage. How the fuck did anyone ever hire me for this shit? What yeah. the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah. Like, I was like, I was, I've never been closer to quitting a project I was getting paid for in my life than yeah. that. And when I was done, it was the best response we had ever gotten. Yeah, and it was a really good piece. The best response but... we'd ever gotten. And commissions yeah. are the worst because someone is, like, I have a good commission story too. Uh, <laughs> we'll have a lot of those, but... I really don't like doing commissions, by the way. P.S. Uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. Right? I know. I yeah. was. Uh, I met this young lady at the art institute opening, actually, <laughs> and she said her daughter yeah. was a big fan of mine and bought. She bought two of my uh, pieces from the art institute art institute show, and she's like, "I want you to draw my daughter." I was like, "Cool." She shows me a Instagram of her daughter, the her Instagram page. Girl is gorgeous. Like I'm like, oh, this wouldn't be a problem at all. So the mom starts asking me for progress shots of this drawing and uh, the girl's name is Clara and uh, start drawing Clara. And um, I think I'm doing a good job. And I say, Hey, I don't normally send progress shots. And she's like, she insists. She's like, no, I want a progress shot. I'm like, okay. So I send her a progress shot of her daughter's drawing. Jana's here the whole time I'm doing oh, it. Oh no, you learned your lesson on that one. And she goes, Oh, it does not look like my daughter face is the wrong shape. Like she's not from, she's from Mexico, I think, but like, in a broken English, she basically said she didn't like it. And I said, okay, well, I don't have time to start over on it. Like the, the thing that happens here is I keep the drawing. You don't give me any money. We part ways. Sorry. I was like, I wish I could point you in the way of some photo realist, realist that I know in Portland, but I don't like if you want my, she knew the style of my work. She'd bought a few pieces. Like my yeah. stuff is not photorealistic by any means. It's, it's almost cartoonesque. It's like, you know, the boobs are bigger. The lips are bigger. Everything that's. So Somebody it's said style. it's like the thing that the girl likes best about themselves is exaggerated. And I took that as a high compliment. I'm like, cool. So Hell the mom yeah. basically says she doesn't like the piece of the daughter. And I said, cool. Well, fair enough. Like, sorry to waste your time. Boom. Like, boom, we're done. So I'm at the bar with Jenna. <laughs> like, I'm all, let's like, I'm like, this is a waste of my time. I'm like, let's give this girl some face tats, you know? Cause like at this point, the drawing, I'm not going to use it for the commission at this yeah. point. Like, let's fuck it. Let's fuck it up. Let's like make it cool. Hell yeah. So I'm like, let's put some Dia de los Muertos skulls on her face. And so I start drawing on Clara's face. And as an ultimate, like F you, I posted on my page and I tagged Clara in it. Oh shit. Uh, Jenna was like, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I'm like, I give no fucks. I'd been drinking tequila. I was like, whatever. Oh <laughs> so, my God. Uh, so, uh, the, craziest response I could have ever gotten is uh, I'm at work the next day. It was a Tuesday. I got a text uh, DM from Clara and she's like, I love the piece. I want to buy it. The daughter, not the mom. What? (laughs) I know. I was like literally kicking my phone. I'm like, get the hell out of here. You know, get the hell out. She's like, how much for the piece? And I said a hundred dollars and she came to my work and she gave me cash. The next day I said, I'll lacquer it for you. She's like, I love, I love this piece of me. How big was that piece? Um, like that size. Oh, okay. It was a smaller drawing okay. that I lacquered. Uh, okay. But the, the last possible response, I remember being like, I shouldn't even tag her in this. I'm going to get some kind of weird, you know, hate mail or something slack. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I did a, I graffitied her face and she loved it. <laughs> Yo, as we always say, if you don't have haters, you're not doing anything. I know. And I was, it was like the last 
it was, it really warmed my heart because I was like, that's the last possible response I would have thought from what I did, you know? And I did it out of, I was angry. I was like, this is a waste of my time. This is a waste of a, a week of my time. Wow. Hey, maybe that's a lesson for you, you know? Yeah. You should let your but emotions daughter, out a little bit cool. more. Like, she... The art. <laughs> <laughs> You're friends with a daughter. She's pretty rad. She's super rad. Right? I mean, yeah. she saw some good art when she saw some good art. And I, I thought it looked just like her. I don't know. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to look like the person. I mean, art is so subjective totally. mm-hmm. towards any person. And you know what? It didn't, it didn't look exactly like her. Like I exaggerated parts of her face that I, I was surprised the mom got, uh, wasn't happy because she, she'd bought my art. So she knew the way that my style was. I'm not a photorealist by any, ch- by yeah, any means. She came, she just wanted something different. I give props to people who can do photorealism. That's amazing. But I'm like, if you want photorealist shit, just take a photo, you know, like <laughs> totally. You I know? mean, your, your, your art has so much personality to it like that'd be ridiculous if you're doing photorealistic shit for yeah, sure because then just take a photo your like, soul would just be dying exactly. i feel i i agree though i don't like i i see no point in just absolutely copying some I, i'm impressed by it and exactly. it's beautiful it's, it's, and it's, it's amazing a, but crazy it's not skill skill. i don't want to do it sex. i don't want to do it it's yeah. a representation of technical skill that's yeah. all it is yeah, yeah. you're but like I'd, well you're that good like your shirt. To, like if I went and drew your shirt, <laughs> I'd probably be blind. For we're one, both kind of wearing cheetah stuff. You yeah. thought, I mean, sure that was digitally you done. You have tiny though, cheetah though. It's really, yeah, it's yeah. little cheetah. <laughs> Yours is more like cheetah. realistic yeah. cheetah. I have Tarjay cheetah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Tar- <laughs> I feel like you were wearing some other kind of animal print when I met you. Yeah, I probably correct? was. Okay. <laughs> I love that, that though. That I mean, that's cool. Me at all. It's, Do you always have a loud style when you dress? Ask Jenna. I don't know. Do I, Jenna? I would say yeah from what I've seen. <laughs> Bright colors. There's like a, there's like a naked photo of you and you still got a weird hat on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, I you always saw. Uh, I mean that's all awesome. that's fucking so, badass. Uh, so I yeah, love it. That you know, people that's are always like, awesome. how do you ride your bike in those things? I'm like, it's easier than walking in Wait, them. You ride awesome. a bike in platform heels. Oh yeah, all the time. You're an animal. I love it. <laughs> badass. This, this is exactly what Portland needs. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I mean exactly what Portland doesn't need. <laughs> My art looks good on brick. So I print, I had uh, my, my, that's I a cloth. A, I, I work at, uh, oh, yeah. really? I drink at a uh, lowbrow and there's a guy, Kevin, Sh- Kevin Shaw, that works at um, Wyden and Kennedy and he generously printed out like eight feet of brick wall for me to hang. Are you good friends with him? Yeah, he's cool. Would he come on the podcast? Yeah. He would, and he pr- he does all kinds of random stuff for Wyden and Kennedy, which I think dope. you guys be into. Just get him on. I'll yeah. hit you up. That'd be dope. I just talked to him tonight, actually. Oh hell yeah! Perfect. They'll be like, and there and like, like right here. To, yeah, we need you to be able, build like an eight foot tongue for like a commercial, and he's like, It'll okay, yeah. yeah. You heard but it they- here first. Uh, what's the name? <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him out. Yeah. You're coming on the podcast. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's cool. And you should have my friend uh, Victoria Vimo Visual. She's a really good artist. She's she's the baby of a family. She's 24, but she is, does really good art. She just moved here from Massachusetts. Oh, you can't be under 25. We don't. Oh lie. yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, it, um, I'll have her lie about her. No, age no, then. no, no. For sure, okay. we'll have her. I like people from Massachusetts. Actually, I get along with them. I think they're kind of cool. Yeah. Where like you guys her. from? Here. Here. Yeah. Both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Born and bred. I don't yeah. blame well, you. Well, no, we were both born in California, but we moved here. here. We moved here as, as like, as like, I moved literally. I was seven months old when I moved to Oregon. You're little. Oh, so, you're still so. getting voted off the island. He was. How old were you? <laughs> you were under ten. I thought. Right? I was like, like three. Yeah. Two. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's irrelevant. Hey, there's cool. It's a, it is irrelevant. I mean, there's cool. There's good and bad people from every place. I don't. I don't get there's, down with the whole California hate. Like, I don't get down with it either. I don't I mean, get neither down with it either. Yeah, like, we're from there, and I honestly fucking no, love California. There's cool Californians, and there's not. Like, no question. There's how there's stupid Oregonians and cool Oregonians. Exactly. Like, exactly. There's no, cool and no, there's good and bad people from every place. They can all go. <laughs> it doesn't. The place doesn't just like doesn't justify the hate. Like. No, I, I'm you with you. You can't generalize and say everyone from California is a bad person. I okay, saw, hold on, hold on, I saw hold on, a funny sticker. Hold up, sorry. No, I just saw a sticker. This is like totally dull now compared to what we were talking about. I saw a sticker that said like Oregon is above California. Uh, it te- and, technically, and for some reason, I like that. No, I, like literally, it's true. Obviously, it's literally true. But I feel like we gotta take that spiritually true too. It's like we gotta make sure that we don't let. California get to us. Why do you yeah. hate California weird. so much? I You're don't hate there. it. No, He's, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Sure you don't. I fucking hate it. No, I'm <laughs> no, 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 I mean, <laughs> I've had two separate people. One person said, yelled out of a car. They said, go back to LA. To and you? Another, 
to yeah and another person said go back to california and i wasn't even wearing my los angeles hat which i have what hat is that this is, is that just your boss in that? What is Forever that? 21. <laughs> your vintage Forever 21. <laughs> yeah, but like people will literally think I'm from California, which is interesting because I'm not. I was born in Germany, grew up in Hawaii. Like Born I, in Germany? Yeah, in, in Berlin. You've ich left this part Ich out. bin ein Berliner. Yeah, Wait, Berliner. When did you go to, Cal- when did you go to Hawaii? So my, oh, this is a whole other story. So my mom was German, clearly, and uh, she was a veterinarian working in Berlin my dad was from Michigan and he got interested in German shit and uh, he got a, a like an exchange scholarship from University of Ann Arbor to go to Freie Universität Berlin to study German. Uh, and he went there and he was, uh, he loved birds. He found a crow that was dying on the street, which in <laughs> Germany, they're like, my mom called them flying rats. Like anyway, it had a, like a, a pox lesion on its foot. Its foot was falling off. The crow was dying. My dad took it into my mom's vet. My mom was already working as a veterinary assistant. She was older than him. Like seven years, I think. And the vet was out of town. So they weren't supposed to do any operations on anything, on any animal. And uh, they laughed at my dad, this American who brought a flying rat in, wanting to save it. <laughs> they were like, this guy's stupid. And they are like, we'll do the operation, even though they weren't supposed to. So they... Yeah cut the pox lesions off the crow's foot and it wouldn't stop bleeding. And my mom was like, fuck, we're going to get fired. Like what the, you know? So they eventually did a thermo counter, which is like burning the wound to, to seal it. Wait, they so gave, you called they, it a what lesion? Uh, uh, like a pox lesion. Like what a is that? Chicken, like a, like it oh, had like the chicken pox on its foot. or small know. pox. Okay, okay. Yeah, pox. But it was like P-O-X. basically like trying to save a rat. You yeah. know, that was my dad. But they should love animals. And 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 they weren't supposed yeah. to do any kind of operation on anything because their boss was out of town, their, uh-huh. the vet. So they give my mom hands the crow back to my dad, half dead. Like, hey, sorry. He's like, what do I owe you? They're like, nothing. Just it's cool. Like, don't come back. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Auf <laughs> Deutsch. <laughs> Komm nicht wieder her. You know. And uh, my dad was like, oh, thank you. He's like, the, probably like the crow doesn't look okay, but whatever. A week later, he comes back to the vet veterinary uh, clinic with a bouquet of flowers. And he said, uh, my crow healed up perfectly. (laughs) It's his crow now. Yeah. And uh, he (laughs) asked my mom out to dinner and he said, I'm a vegetarian. Is that a problem? (laughs) Damn. (laughs) And my mom said, I'm going out with the germ with the American grain eater. (laughs) Are you a vegetarian? No, I'm an I'm a strict opportunitarian. Uh, Mindy corn dogs are a primary sure. part of my diet. Well, you brought the pizza you brought was vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. so I, oh wait, no, it wasn't. It had uh, ham, Canadian dipped bacon, in sauce. I won't eat anything that. That's I right. Get. Wait, tell us your sauce theory. Yeah, uh, food is just a vehicle for sauce. Food is a vehicle. It is. <laughs> and <laughs> if I'm you've sorry. ever eaten, if you've ever eaten with Alex Moan, you know that to be more true than anything. <laughs> Alex Moan will only go to restaurants where he's allowed to pour his own boats of sauce. Okay. Are we yeah. still on? Are we still on the podcast? Yeah, we're still on. It's Friday night. No, no, no. We're, we're in the street now. Yeah, we're taping. We, we were taping after, like, like five seconds after we told you to stop, we started taping again. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Cascade Street Distillery. It's still For just sure. good. Cascades, no, it's really good. Cascade Actually. Street Distillery is fucking us up with this delicious alcohol that we can't stop drinking. Look at the bottle. We started this today. Yeah. We started this a few hours ago, yeah, Cascade like, Street Distillery. Come on. And also, like, beautiful artwork on the bottle. No, they do have really pretty artwork. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. It's really nice looking. Nick Beasley Beautiful. is the owner, and Beautiful. he's a very nice, nice fellow, a good friend of mine. Um, Where's but the distillery at? It's actually in Sisters. It's not on Cascade Street. Oh, like near Bend. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> ben, yeah, by Bend. Bend yeah, it's pretty cool. No, Bend is cool. Cool moments. I don't know. Yeah, Bend's pretty cool. <laughs> but like Sisters is like, like one the road. Pearl. Bend is like if a whole town was the pearl. It's a whole town. <laughs> <laughs> If the whole town was a pearl with horses everywhere, <laughs> just horses ro- everywhere. Have you edited that out? Hold on. Have you guys the, been no. to a rodeo? The bend is going to. No, screw it. It's fun. Me. The bend mayor comes We're to not it. Bend. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We're not in bend. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, dude. <laughs> that was the most insulting tone I've ever heard out of Alex's mouth. Bend. Bend. We're We're fucking pearl. bend. <laughs> I would never allow We're my podcast on. to bend. <laughs> <laughs> We're well, actually blocked in Bend. Alex <laughs> went in and blocked Ben from the iTunes. I got ben from Ben, the Google Play. The He's black like, the black bull Ben barge. Oh dude. We should ben. do black bulb does bend. 
And oh, then, dude, tour and bend and just talk shit. I heard about, there's a lot of breweries <laughs> there. Dude, I really oh, do yeah. think that this is a really easy podcast to take mobile. Like we could put yeah. it on a smaller Zoom, like a four channel output with a smaller chords, and we can literally go anywhere we want. Yeah. And like, we can make funny like you, you I've never been too. to like the Dallas. I, mean, I would love that's literally what Tim Ferriss does. Yeah. Like I I think that if you are I mean I'm not saying right this, but like if you were traveling with us, let's imagine for a second. Yeah. And actually went to the breweries and just like observed you drawing and to see what happens to you and let's just like commented like, oh, oh, someone's coming up. Oh, yeah, two like people. I had this guy last what? night. I was drawing at Lowbrow. And he said that he was a backup dancer for Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> what did he look like? Describe him. I mean, he looked like he would be a backup dancer for Vanilla no, Ice. What, right, like, okay. no, what does a backup dancer for Vanilla Wait, Ice look like? He had some other story, too. He like, I can't remember. But yeah, that, w- that was what stuck out to me. Was that he said it was a backup dancer for Vanilla Ice. That's what's important to you. But what did he look like? Stories. I want to know what he looked like. He looked like a, and he said he was from Hawaii. Hmm. Okay. He looks like, like a uh, surfer, kind of. I already believe yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already a complete belief. I'd have to look at my phone because I know I told the other part of the story to you. Was he white? He was white. He yeah. was white, so he was Howley too. He was a Howley. Yeah. His name was Mike something. This is something we cover with everyone, and I think we like sort of touched on it with you, but not really. But like, what kind of stuff do you do to stay healthy? Keep uh, your head in the game. Oh yeah. I mean, I love to run. That's the only healthy thing I do. Yeah, I ran. I ran one marathon. When? Oh shit! In 2011, you're literally the most athletic person we've had on the podcast. uh, I got a three. (laughs) I I did a marathon in three fifty nine fifty nine, which is uh one second. Oh, I remember what the other, what the guy with the, what the guy um, did. Which guy? <laughs> the vanilla ice break, yeah. backup dancer? He also worked yeah. for Anthony Bourdain. That was this other kind of Oh, movie. shit. <laughs> that's like, oh, that's like most <laughs> fucking hero. Yeah, he's that's literally hero. Right. Yeah. In New York. Anyway, back but to no, the- No, no, no. No, no, no. Finish the story. Well, you can't just drop that and stop. What did he say? I met him at Lowbrow last night. What did night? he look like? Alex Mullen would turn on Parts <laughs> Unknown and sit on the ground in front of the TV, just looking yeah, directly up about, at it. Oh, can, can we talk about Anthony Bourdain? Like, about, yeah, let's go Okay. Like, I didn't know him, but shouldn't he have died, like, jumping out of a plane into an active volcano or something? Like, that would have been he cooler. died. He committed suicide in a hotel room. Like, that's so generic. But like, is that even deeper? Does that make it even deeper? It's like he hated it so much. He's like, I don't even care. I'm literally going to do it, I don't, it with a tie so uncharacteristic. and a doorknob. It seems so uncharacteristic. Or do you hate life so much that you don't care? Do you, wait, wait. Do you or think, like, wait. did you do it all? Like, he banged all the hottest actresses. He ate all the best food. He went he, to all the countries. Like, he was just done. He was like, I'm done. I just, Rod, see that finished. I could see. I could I see that. I finished. I just, I just, I'm done. Do you like, know Rod Stewart had so much sex he didn't like sex at the end? He was just sick of sex because really? he had so much. Yeah. I thought our bodies were programmed to not have that happen. <laughs> that's not. Uh, but I don't know. What? That's what he said. I don't know. Don't he, ask, I, I haven't reached there's that. There's all point. kinds of, there's all kinds of <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, I haven't reached. I mean, I've had a decent <laughs> amount of. You can yeah. have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've partied with the best of them and fucked with the rest of them, but like, yeah, I'm, I haven't gotten to that point yet. You we know? gotta bring her back. <laughs> <laughs> I like the vibe she put out. I, I value this. This is good. <laughs> you guys are. Where'd you, you guys are. Where'd you get that Takati from? <laughs> Dude, you are you are you are his you're his spirit animal. Even though we're not supposed to say that. I feel like I'm kind of sweaty. This is what's happening. No, 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 he's sweating all the time. Shit. He's the sweatiest guy I know. I got I'm the to no, 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 I'm really like oily, like like the no, military like, is trying to invade my forehead. I'm like nervous. I'm like always nervous. It's the thing. I should just get used to it. You yeah, know? you embrace it. I like make myself nervous. Yeah, but you draw because of it, and you make fucking beautiful shit because of it. It's Thank fucking you awesome. Make fucking beautiful shit because of it. <laughs> I love to run. And and then the thing about art is like, I like to do all this other shit as well. Like I love cocktail waitressing. I love running. I love being out, hanging out at bars. So should I with hang out with Jana? Like I like drawing. I don't feel like I like drawing any more than I like anything else. And that you might disown me as an artist for that. But like, it's just one of the things I do to keep myself waking up in the morning, you know? So honestly, one of the things that we value on here more than anything else is the different, ways people use art to enhance their lives. It doesn't yeah. matter if you do it for your soul, if you do it for money, like we're here because of art. Yeah. The art brings people together for so many different reasons. It doesn't matter. Like we're not, we, the last thing we want to do is judge someone on here yeah. for why they do art. The fact that you're enhancing the world is a good thing. And we want to appreciate you for that. Yeah. Art not, is, art is it, one of the many things that I love to do. And I love, I, agree. Ma- I love many things. I feel like the best thing to do in life is to love many things. 
to eat many things, to like experience many things, to go to many countries. Like uh, art is just like, oh, art's important, but it's not the end all be all. Like, I don't know. Like, I like it just as much as I like. I love to run. Uh, I've been doing it since I was 14. Um, it helps me clear my mind. It, I listen to music. I, I don't know. Everything's like, I've never finished a run and been like, that was, I regret that. Totally. <laughs> I regret going on that run. <laughs> you know, like I was totally. finished run be like, I can deal with shit now. Like, and I've had a lot of bad shit happen. And so I feel like my cat and running helps me with that. Pressure but, makes diamonds. Absolutely. Yeah. Other than that, I don't do anything healthy. I basically <laughs> eat like a stone pregnant person. I drink tequila <laughs> like it's going out of style. Tequila's great. Yeah. I love beer. Beer's I, chill. I don't get a lot of sleep. I Fuck love sleep, sleep. though. Uh, sleep, yeah. No worries. Yeah. About that. But I run to counteract that. And and it's my it's like my system of checks and balances. Like if I can't get up and go on a run, then I know I'm fucked up. Like I know I'm like, okay, I gotta reel it in, Duval, Duval, like reel it in. Like if <laughs> totally. I can't get up and go on that run, like I know I like had too much gin or tequila or yeah. you know? For sure. Interesting. And I've been living on my own since I was seventeen, so I have to have established my way an, my own way of like self regulating myself because I could easily <laughs> just drink tequila till I Got into the tequila hole and just like never came out. You know what I mean? Cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah. Rosa. Yeah. Rosa. Yeah. You say it Salud. properly. Salud. Yeah. But I Down feel mash. like, you Down know, mash. I feel like whatever you do, like as long as you find, arrange your life so you have some way of wanting to get out of bed in the morning and doing, you know, whatever it is. Totally. It doesn't matter. I agree. Just do it. Somehow, For sure. Somehow we made this sentimental again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I feel like my mom was depressed her whole life and she was always trying, like she thought happiness was some basket that was going to arrive on her doorstep. And I think happiness is just a little moments in your life that are like, cool. totally like happiness is not not something that's all of a sudden going to happen to you. It's just Absolutely. like, if you can just go through life and stop internalizing, worrying about everything, you know, if you could just, be like, this is great. Like I'm having a really good day. Like that's what happiness is. It's not going to be some prepackaged box. That's going to arrive on your doorstep on Friday. And you're like, I have the right husband and the right job and the right, you know, I feel like I'm almost always looking for that. That shit does not exist. Like well, you just have to look for the little, the little moments. And that's what happiness is. Mm-hmm. It's not, a, it's not a means to an end. It's not a thing that's going to be. Yeah. It's not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not this package that's going to arrive. It's like, you just enjoying it for the moment. For sure. And you want to just make sure you have like more happy moments or whatever, yeah. you know, it's not, it's, 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 it's again, there's no, there's no destination. You know, you just, you're improving your and journey. And I feel like so many people are looking for the destination. Like, totally. Absolutely. I'm going to get married and I'm going to have 1.5 kids and I'm going to have like a chihuahua. Yeah. yeah once this to, happens, I'll be happy. Yeah. They're trying you know? to live to a standard, you know, they're like, yeah. I, the society has told me that this is success. And it's not though. Success and is it's happiness. not, it's not only not success, it's not happiness. Yeah, success, no, no, like success is just you being happy and content with life mm-hmm. and enjoying it. Absolutely. That's it. Like, some people think they get a job, like, oh, I got a nice office job. Again, I work at Nike. Corporate. It's like, whatever, I make way more money than you waiting tables. Like, cool. You know, like, I'm not going to lie. Wait, I made a shitload of money being a bartender. Amen. Are you still a bartender? No, I do this now. This is my, cool. This is my office. You know. For sure. I was going to point out, you know, like, we, you know, we, we, we have an art podcast, but. Alex and I spend more time podcasting than we do drawing or yeah, anything like that. Yeah. Or, you know, and like well, I, photography I, is my outlet here. That's you're a really true. Good photographer. I can tell. Oh, thanks. But you do thank photography you. for the podcast. So you're getting it. Uh, you're getting experiment with the podcast. I like you're getting show. off do you from do the it podcast. For outside stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. You sh- uh, clearly you do. I was like, if you don't, you should. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know that. about that, but yeah. 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 $12,000 a photo. <laughs> <laughs> aim high, aim high. The yeah, worst thing right. someone can say is no, you know? It. I, no, it's so true. It's all right. it's no, all right. it's, okay. no okay. it's so true. <laughs> I get For sure. It's fine. Supply and demand is the most basic rule everyone forgets. Yeah. It's, it's so like, amazing how often uh, people don't forget it or don't remember it. The movie with, um, what's his name? Leonardo DiCaprio. Where Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. He's yeah. like selling the pen. Yeah. And he's Supply like, I need a pen right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sell me the pen. Sell me the pen. 
I forget exactly how he does it, but it's amazing. And he's yeah. like, sell me the pen. And uh, the dude is like, well, I need the pen to sign something, you know? And he's like, oh, now everyone needs a pen. Right. So, yeah. Something about his life or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good movie. Good movie. Good Great movie. Good movie. I drew a guy. Yeah. I drew a guy. This guy DM me. He said, can I be your next muse? Tiger. Wait, wait. He and called I himself said, a tiger? No, he said, he called me a tiger. Hey, tiger. Can, oh. I, be, can I be your next <laughs> muse? <laughs> And I don't normally draw guys, but I was like, that's the second funniest DM I've ever gotten. The first funniest DM, look at my Instagram. You'll see it. It's way down in the feed. It's about some guy wanting to do my laundry or something. Whoa. <laughs> that's a new one. Anyway, yeah. Uh, this guy DM me to draw him to be his, to, for him to be my muse. And I said, I don't normally draw guys, but that's a really funny DM. I looked at his pictures and I was like, if I'm going to draw a guy, this guy's really interesting looking, hella big beard, whatever, whatever. Oh, nice. So I go, I draw at bars and I'm drawing this guy's portrait. Everywhere I go, someone has a funny story about the guy I'm drawing. Oh, and I no. don't really know him, but I noticed that uh, uh, Jana follows him. Janicide, at Janicide follows him. And uh, Daniela Soros Hold Rex, my it's, other- She's my shaking other, her head. Don't add me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my other friend at Daniela Soros Rex follows him too. So I was like, he must know my friends. Oh, Nice. And he has a big beard. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to draw a guy, he's like the guy I would draw. It's inter- he's interesting looking. So everywhere I go drawing him, someone's like, oh, he was barting at Tonic and he drew me. And uh, he, we went to Sears and got glamour shots. Like everywhere, every bar I go, there's some interesting story about him. Or like he's in Portlandia or like blah, blah, blah. Last bar I go to, to finish the drawing. I'm at yours because it has good lighting. It's like cafeteria style lighting in this bar. I love yours. And they have Bekarovka, by the way. Anyway, so I'm at yours drawing, finishing, this, and this girl walks past me, gives me the side eye, comes back. She's like, oh my God, is that Jedediah? And I'm like, yeah. At this point, I'm like, yeah. And uh, she's like, can I take a photo of it? I'm like, sure. And uh, so she takes a photo and sends it immediately to the dude. And I, it was supposed to be a surprise. Like, the oh, giant, yeah. no. Oh, no. Uh, so damn. That, anyway, so he texts it right back to me. And I'm like, well, spoiler alert. There you go. Oh, and, no. Uh, lame. Anyway, nice that's how my suit. He's cool. We've been uh, hanging oh, out. That's lame. Sorry to hear that. No, 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 no. Either way, it's uh, it's cool. We've been because we've been hanging out, and he's a cool. He's a cool ass guy, and I haven't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Need a that's, water break. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. So, anyways, how can people find you? What's your uh, social handles? Where Where are you on the internet? Uh, I don't have a computer, but I'm on my little phone a lot. Uh, I'm at Anna D's nuts. So yeah, A N N A D E E Z N U T Z Z with a Z. Um, I have a Hotmail account still. If you wanna, no way, <laughs> Hotmail. <laughs> Duval that's, underscore that's Anna like at so, Hotmail dot com. Uh, Duval so what? Duval what? But yeah. Oh, you have a website? What the hell are you talking about? You're totally digital. Yeah. Digital AF. Yeah. What's what's the website domain? AnnaDuvalArt.com. So AnnaDuvalArt.com. Anna D's nuts on Instagram. Um, Do you have any anything coming oh, yeah. up show wise or anything? I have a ki- well, on Facebook. I'm Kill All Artists with a capital K. Kill All Artists. I have a show up at Slingshot. I have some other shows in my back pocket, but I don't actually. You just keep them in your pocket. Uh, yeah. Uh, Momos. I sell my prints at Momos. Downtown. Forever. Momo's, yeah, 10th and Yamhill, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Sell my prints there every day. Well, you should definitely come back because you seem, I think we had a good conversation. This is probably the longest podcast we've ever done. It is. Absolutely. You should cut out the end of it. No, no, (laughs) no, we're not going (laughs) now. Nope, but it was a pleasure having you. I think you're a nice person. I think you're a nice person. (laughs) Whoever stole my motorcycle, I am so upset with you. Uh, Someone stole your motorcycle? Someone stole stole his motorcycle from my my apartment like a month ago. You're bringing it up for for months. You put a picture of it like right. It's been two months. Yeah, no, it really sucks. He's not over it. I I had that thing for like a long time. I can't believe someone stole your motorcycle. I know. That's why I want him to give it back. Fucked off. Yeah, thank you. You're going to get it back. Anyways, on that note. (laughs) Oh, and you can find me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can come to, should I say? Yes. Jake's Grill. Come, come. I'll wait on you at Jake's Grill. Whoa. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, downtown? Downtown. Hell yeah. Across don't, on the Target. Don't get any ideas. They got a I great know. happy hour. We, yep. And, uh, I'm sure no one from corporate is watching this podcast. I hope. They didn't, I mean, they, don't, they didn't sustain through two hours of podcast. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and yeah, find uh, us on our Patreon. Oh yeah, we got a Patreon now. If you guys want to support us, we're gonna. It, oh, why did we not? Why did we not bring yeah. this up in the beginning? Yeah. I don't know. We got a Patreon now. It's uh, patreoncom slash podcast. Let's make a video. The we'll make actually. a video. Yeah. We've got uh, a few tiers. We're gonna make more. The more subscribers we get, we'll make badass content for you guys. Photos, yeah. videos, whatever you get. And, we're, uh, uh, yeah, extra, and then we get extra real podcast. We can get real cameras. There are these. Pieces. <laughs> 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 okay, we can finally buy. Honestly, all the. Oh, yeah? All the money's going to go back into the podcast because we want to make this better for you guys. We're having a fucking blast doing this. We love the community. We just want to make it as good as possible. So I do it for you, okay? Yeah. So uh, please support us. You know, tell your friends. uh, And like I always say, we love you guys. Thank you so much, Anna, for coming on. Love you. Thank you, Nick, as always. Thank you, Alex. Tell your friends. Who's wasted and screaming. And uh, thanks again. (laughs) Peace out. (laughs) 